good energy in the room. All right. It, I don't know what time it is where I live, but um, I don't want to know. You're right. So let me get this thing up and running. Here we are. So I'm Mark Levy. I head up employee experience at Airbnb, and I'm really excited that Stefan has invited me to join you here today. And it's appropriate uh, for me to be here for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, Airbnb was founded by three people, uh, two of whom are Rhode Island School of Design graduates. And I'll tell you a little bit about the story of how we started and how it is from a service design mindset that this, uh, this company or this movement uh, was started. Um, prior to working at Airbnb, I was a global head of talent for Landor, which is a global branding and design firm. So I've had kind of creativity and design in my blood, uh, and I really enjoy working with people with the type of mindset that you bring with you. Um, they asked each of us to talk about quality of life personally, and so uh, I'm sharing with you a picture of my wife and three kids, and uh, that's what, to me, keeps me grounded and gets me excited to get out of bed every day to uh, enjoy life and to uh, enjoy work. Um, here we are in the Los Padres National Forest on a backpacking trip and uh, not only family but also just being out of doors and being able to experience the wonderful parts of nature is kind of my, my quality of life. So the topic of today's uh, first discussion is around how does employee engagement drive great customer service? And at Airbnb, we've, we've really tried to figure out uh, how we think about our customers in a broader sense. And so for us, we call that community engagement. And our community is our employees and our hosts and our guests. And um, I'll explain a little bit more what I mean by that as we get into the half an hour together. Um, I wanted to start today with a short video, which uh, is basically the latest way in which Airbnb is coming to life. Uh, we recently relaunched our brand uh, based on relaunching our mission. And, and it's very relevant because what we're trying to do is create uh, much more of an intersection between our employees and our guests and our hosts around the, uh, the new theme, which is to be able to belong anywhere. So I thought I'd show it with, uh, with, uh, to you, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. excited when we relaunched the brand because it was telling the story of how uh, we try to help people connect around the world and we do that through places, people, and love. And it, it goes with a the theme as well around quality of life and how we're trying to change the world through making connections and how that can improve people's lives through travel experiences. 
Um, we also use this idea of belonging, of how we think about our employee engagement, as well as how we engage our employees with our hosts and our guests. Uh, but I don't want to be presumptuous because we are only a six-year-old company. So I thought I would start uh, with our founding story. And it's quite interesting. As I mentioned, it, got, it does come through a service design mindset. Um, and the company was started by solving a problem. So we have, uh, this is Brian and Joe's apartment from six years ago. And what happened was they couldn't afford the apartment in San Francisco. And... What they decided was they try to make some money. And there was a design conference actually coming into San Francisco and the city was sold out, no more hotels. And they thought, well, why don't we have people to our apartment? We'll make money by inviting them in and that'll be a great way for us to make our rent. The only problem was they didn't have any extra rooms. So they decided to go out and buy a few air mattresses and they created the first air bed and breakfast, which is how we got our name. And so they, through their mindset, through service design mindset, created this company, which now, uh, as you'll hear about, has grown significantly. They uh, didn't do so well. And so the next thing that they, uh, they did to try and raise some money was they went to the Democratic National Convention in Denver, Colorado, and they decided to create these boxes of cereal based on the two candidates. They charged $40 for each box of cereal. They only probably spent about a a dollar uh, each, but a lot of time and effort went into it. And they actually raised enough money to keep the company going for another couple of uh, months or so until they ended up in the offices of one of the venture capital firms in Silicon Valley who thought this was a crazy idea. He just They could not believe that anyone would invite strangers into their homes. But they were in so inspired by their entrepreneurial, and we call it actually serial entrepreneurial um, <laughs> aspect, that they ended up funding them. And, and from there, we've had several series of funding and, and it's taken the company to where it is now. So a very interesting story. Um, I, I saw earlier you asked how many people had stayed on Airbnb. How many people uh, are here today on Airbnb? Great, well, we're, we're happy we could, we could uh, do something to partner with, uh, with the conference. Anyone here a host on Airbnb? Excellent. So thanks for being part of the community. Uh, so I don't want to insult anyone, but the way, the way it works essentially is that uh, you discover amazing places and we now have, uh, with the brand launch, a, a more beautiful website and uh, also mobile application. And it gives you opportunities to see the listing, to meet the host, to know what the amenities are. And then you basically book a stay and then you travel. And, and whether it's an apartment for a night a castle for a week, and that actually is a listing. Um, a villa for a month, if you happen to be able to afford it or have a sabbatical. Um, and basically, we then connect people with personal hospitality and local experiences. Um, as mentioned during the introduction, we are a global community. We currently exist in 190 countries. We have 34,000 cities that we're in and 900,000 listings. So our, our goal is to try and be bigger than Hilton and better than the Ritz. Uh, and so we're on that journey. In just the six years we've been in business, we, uh, we are 20 million guests strong. And clearly we're part of a very interesting and emerging sharing economy, which uh, has its strengths and its opportunities as we uh, struggle in some cities with helping them to understand how to be part of the sharing economy. And it's very interesting. In some cities like uh, Seoul, Korea, or Portland, Oregon, we actually are partnering with the governments on how to help them to embrace the sharing economy. In other cities around the world, even San Francisco where we exist, New York and uh, Barcelona, we're, we're locking horns to try and figure out how we can establish legit legit legitimacy with what we're doing. So it makes, makes for an interesting uh, dilemma, but we're, we're up for the challenge. So I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk further about this new idea of our mission being around belonging anywhere, um, since it is the basis of how we're looking at our employee experience and how we're also connecting employees and guests uh, and hosts. And I wanted to do that through another story, um, this one through the eyes of our hosts.
So I have a trick that I play on my guests. They send me an email and they want to book one of the rooms and they talk about how pretty it looks and all that sort of thing. And then they come here and you can see that they look disappointed because the front door is really flat and plain and it just has like a number on there. You can see that they're confused, like have we made a mistake? And then they open the door and then they can look down the walkway and suddenly they're happy. And I just think that that kind of mystery and the surprise makes it a really special moment for them. And for me, when I see that happen with them. After hosting hundreds of guests, I realize how I'm connected to these different people who belong from a different culture, different country, and different background. There is a common human bond which connects us. We all just want to be happy, to be healthy, and to just live without like fear. And that feeling is extremely overwhelming. Being an Airbnb host is being a part of a global community. He gave me faith in humanity, to be honest. When you come as guests and you leave as friends. It's a very personal experience for all of us. People find out that even if they might be the black sheep of their family, that they actually can belong here. In the stringent boundaries of different countries, different gender, different race, this has not been possible before. Just talking to them gave me a lot of perspective of different culture. And I think they go home with a new sense of self. And that sounds kind of big, but I think it's actually true. And that experience is much more enriching. Imagine today that it's possible for all of us to experience that. So um, talk about co-creating. Um, these were shot probably over a year ago, and it was from the voices and the view of our host that we came up with this idea around belonging, which became then the way in which we're talking about our brand, but also how we're looking at our employee experience. Um, our mission and our values are very core to our employee engagement as well. It's the basis by which we uh, assess all of our candidates. In fact, um, we have our employees or our candidates go through two sets of uh, interviews. The first set is for functional technical experience. And the second set, every single employee goes through two interviews with people outside of their function who are solely looking for whether or not the individual um, has passion for what we're doing and would exemplify our core values. And so let me tell you a little bit about those core values as well. The first one, uh, no surprise, is around being a host. So we're a hospitality company, and what we expect is every one of our employees to be a host to each other, uh, to be a host to anyone they're coming in contact with as a representative of Airbnb, and we also use it as a lens by which we're looking at de designing our leadership point of view, host-like leadership. Second is uh, champion the mission. If you don't get up every day and are excited about how to change the world and disrupt travel and connecting people, then it's not the right company for you and we don't want you working with us because it's just too much in our blood and what, what keeps us uh, connected and what, uh, what inspires us every day. The third one, which you'll appreciate um, being designers, is that uh, the founders got really inspired by the Disney group around the animation and how they created a frame for every single piece of the story, whether it was Pinocchio or Dumbo. And so we have these frames, you can see illustrated here, that we used to try and identify every step of the process with our hosts, with our guests, and with our employees, an end-to-end -end journey. We have, a, we have a, a core value of being a serial entrepreneur. I don't need to explain that any further because you, uh, you know where the roots of that. But we want to continue to feel like a startup. We want to continue to feel small. Um, and we want people to be scrappy and creative in how they look at solutions. Uh, in the complexity of today's world and with connecting a uh, double-sided market, we try to, this is the hardest one, uh, but we do have a core value of simplify to try and keep things from getting too complex. And then finally, uh, our last core value is around embracing the adventure. Uh, we definitely need people with, a, with a, a, not a fixed mindset, but an open mind who are curious and who are excited about what's coming because we're reinventing things every day. It doesn't matter, you know, I worked at Levi's and Gap, our CMO came from Coca-Cola, we've got folks from Facebook and Yahoo, and it's just different. It's different at Airbnb than it was anywhere else, and we're kind of writing whatever the next chapter is, and it's exciting and it's daunting, um, and a lot of fun. 
So let me talk a little bit now around how, how I see employee experience uh, driving, um, driving our employee engagement and leading to employee engagement. So when I started interviewing with, with Brian, our CEO, we started talking about the typical HR functions of recruiting and um, talent management and recruiting uh, operations and talent operations, but it just didn't seem like it was, it was really capturing the essence of all of the employee engagement aspects. So we had a customer experience function and we thought, why don't we create an employee experience function? And so for us, what that includes is your traditional uh, HR functions, as I mentioned, but it also includes some interesting things that usually sit in other parts of the organization. So for example, on my team, not only do I have talent and recruiting, but I also have real estate and facilities. So we were very concerned about the roof we put over our employees' head and how that comes to life. Food, um, you'll hear a little bit more about how we f serve three healthy meals a day. And then citizenship, and I'll talk a little bit more about how we launched a global citizenship program. And then there's what I would call our secret sauce. We have this group called Ground Control, and they are essentially there to bring the culture to life. It was a small group of about five. We now have them scattered around the world, and they're focused on internal communications, employee events, employee recognition, employee celebration, and uh, skill sharing. In addition to that, they're also involved in how we bring our workspace to life, and you'll see a little bit of that as we move forward. But it, it's really looking at the end-to-end -end experience rather than just the more traditional kind of policing events that HR can be known for and why I don't like being called HR. Um, I thought I'd give a shout out and a little bit of a precursor to Stan, who's the following speaker, because uh, he wrote some interesting books on goldfish. Uh, and the Green Goldfish book is around how happy employees make happy customers. And I feel like we're a bit of a chapter out of his book um, because you'll see little things that we do and focus on that really help us to move the needle towards happy, customer, ha happy customers through our happy employees. And I'm sure you're gonna enjoy uh, his, his uh, comments in a little bit. So um, now I'm gonna kind of give you some nuggets of the things that, that I think are special and that hopefully um, you can figure out how you might adapt these to your organization if they work for you. So in our workspace, um, being a global hospitality company, we try and highlight and, and honor the folks that host and the guests that travel around the world. So what we've done is all of our meeting rooms in our offices in San Francisco and actually around the world um, are inspired by a listing, an actual listing from somewhere uh, in another part of the world. So this one here happens to be uh, from Paris and it's tricked out in all of the nuances of that specific listing and the picture of the listing is on the door of the meeting room and it helps all of us when we go into meetings remember we're a global hospita hospitality company but it also helps us to feel like we belong and we can work in a place that's that's more comfortable um, in our Copenhagen office uh, we have someone Anne Sophie here uh, from there today they actually have a sauna uh, in, in one of, as one of their meeting rooms and I have to say I was there this summer in July and it was beautiful weather but that that room was a sauna um, this here is a picture of uh, one of our kitchens that we have around the offices. Uh, it's kind of the modern day water cooler. It includes uh, some tasty beverages, some fresh snacks, an espresso machine, and it's where people either come to refuel or also just to have a meeting. And this is after uh, a kitchen in Reykjavik in one of our listings. Um, as I mentioned, we serve uh, three free meals a day. And our, our menus each day are based on either a listing as well. So it might be uh, breakfast from Korea, could be lunch from Mexico and dinner uh, from somewhere in Buenos Aires. But every meal is based on a listing or here I kind of captured two pop culture menus that we have. Everything's kind of tongue in cheek and makes it exciting and interesting to come to a meal. Uh, we are a dog friendly organization. Uh, probably on any given day, we've got 25 dogs running around. Again, it's a way to feel like you belong. It makes you feel like you're home. It can be a little distracting. There are some accidents sometimes. Uh, we had one bite, dog bite, which you know didn't turn out so well. Um, so now we have some dog training and some uh, dog owner training. Um, 
And it's actually, it's one of the most interesting things when we have to negotiate a lease around the world, one of the things we always try to do is work in the dogs because we do try and have some parity around the world. Culturally, obviously, it doesn't necessarily fit in every part of the world, um, but it is one of those things that kind of makes us special. Um, one of the more recent things we've done is to, again, going back to this idea of co-creation, is we've actually started to involve our employees in how we build out our spaces. So in the last year, we've built uh, customer experience centers in both Dublin and in Portland, Oregon, in the US. And in both of those spaces, we've involved our employees in trying to decide what would be comfortable for them and a place to work. So I don't realize this looks like a listing, but this is actually one of our offices in Portland that they designed from scratch and, and has them feeling like they belong and somewhere comfortable to work. Here's another picture of that, of that same listing. Uh, closer to home, down in Dublin, we have uh, in our front lobby designed a pub. Um, and it's a place where people gather. It's also a place where beer does flow. We try to keep that to the afternoons, but sometimes you need a drink in the morning. Um, it's also quite interesting because you can see it's on the ground floor and uh, there are lots of times we have passers-by try trying to come in and get a drink, which we don't have a license to do. Um, but uh, it's, it's a fun, fun situation. Um, final picture of our offices. This, believe it or not, is one of our bathrooms. So take the concept of every frame matters, take two designers from RISD, and what do you get? A very interesting place to uh, rest. Um, this happens to be based on an on a outdoor wilderness theme. It comes equipped with a stuffed bear. Um, we have cricket noises um, within, the, uh, within the bathroom, and it's got a pine scent that gets spritzed every couple minutes. So really take it to, to the extreme when it comes to, to tricking out our offices. A couple other things we do that I think are, are helpful for engaging our employees. Every other week, in fact, this evening, our time, uh, nine o'clock San Francisco time, uh, we have what we call World At. And we bring the entire company together for an update uh, that's led by our CEO, has various employees from around the world participating and sharing what's going on across the company. Um, it's live from San Francisco, live stream around the world, and we have taken it on the road a few times as well. And it's a great way for us to try and connect uh, across uh, our now 17 offices and now about 1,200 employees, which is up from about 600 a year ago. And one of the things that we definitely uh, don't want to do is, as uh, Brian says, and excuse my French, uh, the last thing he wants to do is fuck up the culture. And so everything we do really is through the lens of making sure that we grow, but we grow with the culture, the core values, and the mission as, as the filter of how we uh, look at things, how we take action, how we hire people, and, and how we um, create our employee experience. Uh, at the end of every week, locally, each office has what we call uh, a Friday meeting. Sometimes it's Thursday, but um, essentially it's much more uh, informal. It's much more interactive with questions and answers. Um, you can see here myself and two of my colleagues. This one happened to be uh, a Friday night lights theme, which is a bad U.S. Uh, sports show, but it was the theme of, of the event. And... Uh, there's an ugly picture of me from high school uh, behind me. And um, this Friday, actually, in San Francisco is a, uh, is a formal Friday. A lot of companies have, have casual Fridays. We have formal Fridays, so people come all decked up, and it's like a whole different place. And you don't even recognize people because they're in their suits and ties or their tuxedos even. Um, but it's a great way to connect at the end of the week, talk about the things you've accomplished, get ready for the weekend, and at least in San Francisco, our Friday uh, meetings end up turning in a happy, happy hour every week. Uh, one week it's, it's uh, hosted in the office, the other week it's somewhere off-site. Um, the pinnacle of our uh, employee experience uh, this past year was when we brought all of our employees together to San Francisco for four days of a meetup. And it was really a magical moment. And I talk about trying to keep the culture alive and trying to make connections around the world. It was really an incredible four days. And I, I started with Airbnb in November last year, and there were still conversations around whether we were gonna do this or not, whether we were gonna spend the money to do it. And 
uh, one of our board members who actually was from Zappo said, you got to do it. You're, you're at the size right now where you got to jump on this and you got to make it happen. You'll, you won't regret it. Within five weeks, we pulled together a party for 800 people in San Francisco and it was really incredible and so incredible that we just announced we're going to do it again this year. The challenge is we're now 1,200 people. Uh, so it'll cost a little more, not more per person, but the challenge for us is really going to be how do we keep it small and intimate. Um, as you heard, uh, and taking kind of a cue from your, your earlier conversations, we also introduced at this event the opportunity for each of our employees to spend up to four hours a month volunteering in the communities in which they operate. And we took advantage of having everyone in San Francisco and we sent everybody out to give back to San Francisco, which hosted us. Um, we also are in the process of, again, co-creating with our hosts a new uh, citizenship initiative called Open Homes, which is going to have us uh, working with those less fortunate to open our homes if it's cancer patients coming to, for treatment near a, ho near a hospital or it's people who are in transition. How do we use the Airbnb community to help those less fortunate? And so we find, and I've found uh, at other companies I work for, that when you want to engage your employees, if you help them to see how they can help others, it really makes them proud of working for the company that gives back. And you also have some great opportunities and moments when you're out together um, working uh, in the community to really build relationships. Going back to this connection of employees and hosts, when we did the community service in San Francisco, it wasn't just our employees that were out there. We invited our hosts and our guests to join us and all give back to San Francisco. And at the same time, when we were hosting our uh, employees who came to San Francisco, those of us that, that had spaces big enough, we actually had them stay with us in our homes, which is a total HR nightmare for for the guy who's leading HR to have people living with each other. Uh, but we made it through that. Um, and we also had one evening, you saw where our, our kitchen crew uh, in San Francisco cooked for all 800 people. And on another evening, we had 80 employees from San Francisco uh, host uh, the visiting employees at their homes for dinners. And that became so successful when everyone went back to their cities, we actually then turned our employees into brand ambassadors and they hosted hosts at their homes so that we could start to bring the connection of our employees and our hosts together even more, and, th and those continue. So all of this to say, um, empirical data would tell you that um, our employees are pretty engaged. So we do an annual engagement survey with periodic pulse surveys, and 88% of our employees said they'd recommend Airbnb as a great place to work. And we're trying to connect our uh, guest or sorry, our, our guest yeah, uh, NPS or net provider scores with our host net provider scores with what we're using as an as a employee net provider score, which is do you recommend Airbnb as a place to stay, as a place to, um, as a place to work? And that seems to be uh, working for us. The last nugget of information before I uh, use up my time is we've also been talking a little bit about a commitment curve and how it is that we try to bring everyone a bit closer towards, towards being a brand ambassador. And at the pinnacle of that would be our employees. But about six months ago, we realized our employees didn't feel as connected as they, as they could or wanted to be. And so we made the decision to treat our employees like, well, we said, let's treat our employees like business partners. And they came back and said, we want to be treated like founders. Um, which is typical of our employees wanting to get even closer. So. Um, from that time, we've talked a lot about how to be more open and honest with our employees. How do we find more two-way conversations? Uh, after this, uh, this proclamation, we started to distribute every week after our executive team meeting the notes from our executive team um, out to all of our employees. Uh, we also share our board meeting notes. And it really has made people feel like they're a lot more connected and understanding what's going on. The other thing we did was we took our playbook for employees and then we used it with our hosts. So bringing people up the commitment curve. And so now we talk about how do we acquire hosts or recruit hosts? How do we onboard our hosts? How do we develop our hosts? And how do we retain our hosts using an employee engagement uh, playbook for that, for that type of activity? And it's really helped. In fact, um, in November, we're having our first host convention trying to get people um, to feel like they can both get information, but give us information so we can make Airbnb in the community even stronger. 
We found a place that will hold 1,000. Uh, we sent out the invitation, and within the first four hours, it sold out. So we now have to increase the capacity to 2,000 people, and we still have another 1,000 on the waiting list. So we kind of didn't know what we were getting into, and hopefully it'll be a magical moment for them, and we're, we're just excited about the growth that we have. So uh, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was um, informative. I hope it didn't sound like some sales pitch um, because I, I don't like showing up to, to events when that's all that, that people are talking about. But clearly, I have a lot of passion around what we're doing. I think it's different. I think we are actually changing the world. And I also uh, hope you learned a little bit about how we see employee engagement translating into customer engagement and community engagement. I thank you for your time. Uh, I'm here for the next few days. I think we've got a panel discussion at noon. And if you have any questions, it's easy to reach me. I'm M-A-R-K, Mark, at Airbnb.com. So thanks for having me.